Ladies and gentlemen, the last week of the North of the North American, no, not North American, <laughs> the National Student Esports Rocket League Winter Split is upon us. We have the challenger bracket today, rounding off how the lower teams will position during this split. I am joined today not by the dulcet Scottish tones of Minecraftman, but by Jar of Jam, because I forgot to ask him where he came from before. <laughs> I had I think a kind con- well up. Yeah, I, I, had a, I, had a, I had a country in my head. I thought it was Romania off the top of my head, but I felt that was no. wrong. No, no. I, I, actually, I knew it was wrong. You, you, you might have Romania in your head because uh, Switchblade J will be going to Bucharest on this weekend or the next weekend. Maybe. He is, he's, of course, the big name now. He's doing the ESLs or so, some sort of a, one of those tournaments. Of course, his CSGO career has skyrocketed. But I am from. Oh, well, it's actually pretty pretty fun to play that game. Uh, if you wish to play that game, if not, I'll just. I I have Estonia as my second guess. Closer. That's much closer than Romania. <gasps> Wait, no. I remember it's Latvia, isn't it? Indeed, it is. That's Latvia. it. Just that's slightly it. more south than Estonia, and bam, you're smack dab in the middle of Latvia. That's exactly where I'm from. But you know, I, hope that... I can provide my dulcet tones as well. It's not only Craftman who has those. Mm. Very, very much so. Well, I, I, I'm vice president of Country Esports Society, and we have quite a few Estonian members, quite a few Romanian members. Um, off the top of my head, I don't think I have, have any Latvian members, so hmm. that's fun. We've got, got, got quite a bit of diversity in our society. We've got quite a bit of diversity on this casting panel at the moment, but uh, it, let, let's not talk about our diversity, but let's talk about diversity of the amount of skill levels that have come into this tournament, and now we've ended up with this sort of Lower 12, which has been whittled down to 4 today. We're casting Loughborough's B team, Loughborough Bull Chasers, and Portsmouth Paladins. Uh, I, I believe you have a document, a certain document, open at Jar, Mr. Jar of Jam. So why don't you uh, open up, take a peek at one of these teams? Well, um, I have already looked at both of them, so it, it's a pretty interesting story. Yes, uh, these teams couldn't exactly make it into the challenger bracket, but I'm expecting uh, quite a bit of a fight from them. The main fact being, it's not a random pickup team. These guys have been playing together for a while. Although both Flobber Ball Chasers and Portsmouth Paladins are, have a similar story in the fact that their roster hasn't been together for a long, long time. Uh, Ball Chasers, for example, yes, TD, uh, TDB has stayed with them, uh, with the team for a really long time, and Cheggers and Meow came in just, uh, just recently at the start of the season, if I'm not mistaken. But already they have been uh, making some uh, some waves, and despite them not predicting that they will go that high, they seemingly are pretty confident with their performance. On the other side, Portsmouth Paladins, Jordi Unknown is the leader of that team, and he is still the the top player of there. He said that he has picked up a couple of players along the way, King Walnut, BKD, and J. James J., but it's still a little bit of more of a it's not a consistent roster as they themselves admitted but they are once again just like the loughborough ball chasers are pretty happy with how far they could get in the uh, in the range of one season it, it is quite it it's sort of this is the epitome of this british university rocket league scene we have two grand champ players on the pitch geordie unknown facing off against tdb and we also have just a few slightly lower ranks that have come along for the ride and have done a superb job keeping up with some of the high level teams. I think Loughborough, that they've been ha- hanging out in uh, this uh, top division, this national league, I believe since the start of introduction from the qualifiers straight into the national bracket, national league. Portsmouth, they too, they've also been sticking around that upper national league for a while unfortunately both these teams missing out on that final step that would have taken them to nottingham this weekend where we have lancaster against the other against loughborough a team so remember that for the weekend if you're available but looks like we're slowly starting to get teams here in here but this is going to be an incredible match these two teams they've been facing off against each other a few times but the most recent of those was actually way back in our league season two, where I believe it was Loughborough off the top of my head that took it three games to one. This is a best of seven. It changes the scene a little bit. 
jar a best of seven? Do you think that's enough for Portsmouth to sort of get their noses ahead of this Loughborough side? Well, actually, uh, if, if you will ask me for a prediction as to how this match will go, I have absolutely uh, no by idea. extension. <laughs> a little bit of a prediction. Yeah. A little bit. But but listen, yeah, Crofters and I never know how this is going to go, so we just sort of say numbers and see what happens. Numbers. Oh, yeah, <laughs> just, just flip, just flip a coin and see what happens. But yeah, just, just based on the history of how these both teams went, uh, seemingly a lot of our ball chaser have a little bit of a go-ahead. That last result in between them way back in our league season two doesn't mean squad. It's completely different teams with the exception of TDB and Jordy. It just it just doesn't matter. It's 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 a blip, and I'm pretty sure a lot of our ball chaser will be happy to get one back and tie up their their mutual record. Uh, since they haven't played this season, it's hard to 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 get them somehow. Uh, we know that we know that Portsmouth Paladins have not qualified for a nationals, uh, and uh, Love Bird Ball Chaser just barely qualified. So as as a result, they still uh, have a little bit more, perhaps an upper hand. And uh, we know that the, both of the teams are not exactly getting enough practice together. So as a result, maybe it will be a little bit tougher for them to get quickly in the swing of things. So whoever is the more adaptable uh, of the two, whoever is uh, more used to playing, for example, with the uh, with the random players online and adapting to their play style, if they remember it correctly, then that team, I think, will get the upper hand. But I really prefer for teams to really just go on the field and prove it uh, just with a game of a ball, five minutes and two nets and six cars. And I'm doing caster math already. It's never a good <laughs> thing to do caster math this early. Well, talking about being able to adapt to a team, Jordi Unknown has been having a, a match off against uh, a Loughborough 18 player, Matt M, and they've been trading places on the on the hierarchy of solo standard, and they're about in the top 30, both of them. So both of them are ridiculously good players at adapting. And you know, for that reason. I think that Portsmouth might be able to edge this out this time. I mean, as you said, it's it's completely different teams. Best of seven, so plenty of time for Geordie to get himself going along with his teammates. So I think I'm actually going to give this one to Portsmouth. Four games to two. Uh -huh. So a little bit of a friendly rivalry between us two, not just be between Lover and Portsmouth, but also between casters. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give it though to you know what same 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 score line, but in the other direction. So it's four to two to Lover. That will be my prediction. I think. I mean. It's, it's, it's all possible. First, since I have not seen these teams play, I'm really interested in how they approach just everything from the very beginning. What are their kickoff strategies? What are their... Well, their kickoff strategy for Portsmouth seemingly is pretty, pretty well thought of. Walnut just dribbles past everything and dodges every single thing, including the goalkeeper, Meow, who just couldn't save it. 1-0. All right. Well, this is a fiery one, and unfortunately in the in favor of the team that you have picked, Dragon. Uh, I'm a very smart dragon. I'm a very smart dragon, but I, I think I finally found out what everyone's saying. This camera glitches with the with the ball shake. I, I I've got the camera shake. I've got the camera shakes. <laughs> well, hopefully, neither of these teams have the camera shakes. A spe camera shake or shaking in the hands as, as as they do need to start concentrating once again. It's Jordy unknown. Almost finds that a lot angle. The Grand Champ skills coming in as he almost finds the angle straight down to the net to find the second goal for this Portsmouth side. A lot of pressure in this Loughborough half, but they seem to be able to break it pretty easily. As Geordie doesn't get a sufficient clear, but BKD makes up for it. And Cheggers gets in there. What a save by Geordie! Keeping it on the line, pinching it on the crossbar to keep it out. Yeah, you, you could already celebrate the goal for Loughborough, but it was not to be when Jordy does everything on the both sides of the field and those two saves that he has made keep Sportsman's net empty. And what a save that was. I'm excited what he does in the attack because if that's the sign of things to come, then, oh my God, that grand championship pedigree will definitely show for Portsmouth. Portsmouth will try and maintain possession in the blue half as Meow and TDB try to get out, but Geordie completely suffocating this Loughborough side into the blue half. King Walnut unable to get a sufficient touch, but it's just a massive hip up, hit up field. They do not keep possession. This is one of the major flaws in Loughborough's attack at the moment. They're just 
pushing the ball out out of their half. They don't try to retain possession like their A team colleagues do. They take it upfield, keep the ball as much as they can, and then look for the pass. This B team is just not using the time wisely they're being given. Yeah, we can see that a couple of times already with Lovebro just dumps the ball straight down the down the field into the goal. But usually there's Jordi unknown, someone else from Portsmouth waiting who dumps it immediately back. And as a result, Lovebro, as you rightly said, just waste their possession while they could really take control of it. Especially especially when there's no one or when Jordi is not back. Seemingly the Portsmouth defense is a little bit more open than usual. Speaking of majority, there he is up front oh. giving the pass to his teammate Waller, giving the ball the opportunity was there for both of them to take a lead on that attempt. But no goal to be seen. Lover defend well and now making a little bit of an attack of their own. Portsmouth will take it forward. That's a great block from King Walnut to prevent the clearance upfield by Cheggers. Feels bad for the man from Jordy, but it might just work out. But BKD just missed out on the shot. King Walnut quick pressure from this Portsmouth player he sends it straight into the mill meow and TDB double commit that's an open net can BKD get there the weak shot is weak but Jordy cleans it up and sends it home a two goal lead in favor of Portsmouth uh, Jordy came into this play when pretty much everything has been decided already Cheggers he had all the time in the world to put it strongly to the left to the right even down the field on the other side if Jordy even could have gotten into it wouldn't matter that much, but a little bit of nerves. And as a result, he just couldn't get a clear enough touch. BKD on the other side also exactly couldn't get a clear touch, but nobody from Lovebro close enough to use that opportunity. As a result, Lovebro won't be happy with conceding that one 2-0 with no real opportunities so far up front. All of them, those shots that they've recorded, again, weren't as strong. And Meow, I, I eat my words immediately. Sheggers to Meow, 2-1 to one, or 1-2 one to two if you're a Lovebro fan. And we're back into the same one goal action. Great patience from Cheggers. Waits for the commit from the Portsmouth defender and just sends it straight off the backboard. And Meow is there to clean it up beautifully. It's a one goal deficit, 135 left to go as Cheggers brings it forward off the kickoff. Good clearance from BKD. Gives himself enough time to recover and gives enough time for his teammates to do the same. As comes off the backboard, Walnut missing on the open net off TDB's weak clear. Chegger, Cheggers takes it off the wall. Good clear from Geordie Unknown. TDB needs to do some work here to take it off the side wall. Decides to let it drop as he sees he has time. Meow sends it out to Cheggers as Cheggers brings it forward. Doesn't commit to the challenge, but does keep possession. So it's sent back straight to Meowers. It needs to do something here. They need to bring it up into that orange half. Making sure they retain possession. As they do lack that one goal that would bring it to overtime. Jar, they are very stuck in their own half, and they seem to lack the ability to gain possession into the opposing half, Loughborough. With the Portsmouth high pressing, it's almost impossible for Loughborough to get anywhere out. I was already expecting in my words immediately to be disproven once again, as Loughborough finally strung together a couple of passes that look promising. And with the a little bit of long recommendance for Portsmouth, uh, that could have been an opportunity for them to lead the ball out. But another chip. You just can't. Look at that. Jordy, every single time in such a perfect position in the net. I think I think his team is heavily relying on him to play that defense hard. And I know they can rely on him to be in the right position. Meow. Oh. This time it's Jordy who is not in the right position. Me and my big mouth for a second time today. <laughs> Lover disprove me as TDB chips it straight for Meow. And I think Jordy has expected the initial shot to come through. By the point that the pass came in back for Meow to take a shot at, Jordi already was out of boost, out of position, out of momentum to make an attempt at a second attempt by Loveborough. And just like that, Portsmouth lost their lead and will be going into the very first overtime. Oh, this is oh, getting can close. Shaggers up front over the net. Struck down in front of the net, TDB. Not almost drops it down straight to Loveborough players, but it's overtime after all. And well, we expected the close one. And if the first game goes straight into the overtime, then the close one it will be. Can't get any closer than this one. Straight into the middle. BKD is there for the pass. Hits the post. Cheggers will take it out. Instantly, straight after the overtime is called. Straight onto the offensive from Portsmouth. Can they keep it going? They have that high press, as he said earlier. Will that bring them goal? Will that siege? Just drain the boost of Loughborough. 
Well, Loughborough is able to just get out for just these short attacks. They're getting in each other's way as Meow brings it forward. Can't get past Geordie. BKD's getting in the way. Sends towards net. That's a great center by Meow. Just giving it a little bit of an unpredictable spin on the ball. But unfortunately, none of his teammates were expecting that. Loughborough, they keep it in that orange half. As Walnut brings it forward. Puts it in the middle. Geordie's there. Cheggers gets the block. Still in the middle as TDB puts it up there. Cheggers can't read the second bounce. TDB hits it off the post. And Portsmouth, they survive this overtime once again. Well, it's, it's an interesting thing that the Portsmouth survived because at the very beginning, I would be surviving anything. But the attack from Rovro, look at that pass. Straight to Meow, Cheggers and Meow. I've, I've read that TDB said that, hey, I'm just hanging in the back while Cheggers and Meow just do all the dirty work for me. And seemingly they really get the understanding in between each other. Loveborough basically ran Portsmouth all over the field and they completely outran them. It could have ended this overtime much, much sooner. Instead, it took them a little bit longer. Look at that, 14 shots for Loveborough and really overtime was completely theirs. And the they they have taken the control once that tie hit in the regulation time. The rest of the game was Loveborough's. I think if we've learned anything from that first game is that this Portsmouth side, they do lack a little bit of either endurance or ability just to keep on pushing and pressing and scoring. That high press, that's been great so far, but they haven't really been able to fully counter and keep that press going to create chances. It's sort of been there to stop Loughborough, but they give them enough time to pick up boost, so it's never really been fully effective whereas Loughborough as soon as they get out as soon as they get that one chance they seem to be able to instantly snap it back on Portsmouth and get the ball into the back of the net in terms of endurance the first few minutes maybe the first minute and a half that's easily Portsmouth's ground they come out the gates really strong and then it sort of falls off a little bit towards the end and that's where Loughborough start shining a little bit more but game two Portsmouth have it all to do so far in the series as they're one down they need to make up that deficit bring it back to a, what would be a best of five they tie up the game it's that common joke between casters that as soon as it <laughs> as soon as it's a one all tie you oh, just sort of shrink it. down the series just by one increment Yep, the, moment, important, yeah. oh, the important ones, BKD and Walnuts in the previous match, uh, the precision did betray them just a little bit because a couple of these shots there were sitters. And that could have swung the game in the Portsmouth uh, is part of favor. Instead, it it, it it went completely the wrong way. Well, the they, they used the mistakes by Portsmouth much more better than Portsmouth did on the other side of the field when Loughborough was uh, overcommitted in some cases or missing the balls themselves. Still, you can see that they are not disheartened. Portsmouth is still in the attack trying to set it up, although I do not believe that that double commit by King Walnut and Jordi know was a good a good start for that one, leaving only BKD as a third player trying to play it. First minute come, came and gone, or went, rather, if we're using the proper tenses, and really, nobody's taking proper control. Portsmouth are not being able to get those two quick goals, or just one quick goal, like the game number one. But Loughborough are seemingly pretty content to wait for their chance and carefully approaching the attack. No high pressing for them, that's for sure. It's kind of... Using that term, all I can think about is the E-League that's just passed, of Weedem girls just sort of waiting patiently in the back and then suddenly springing forward and scoring a ton of goals and cloud nine just having the constant press i'm sure this uh portsmouth team wouldn't want the same outcome as they're playing the cloud nine in this high pressing game so jordy gets a shot but that's a fantastic save by tdp he seemed to fall in the right position but i'm sure he'll take that king will not get a challenge and jordy's there the accuracy is off as TDB makes a clearance out, out to the side. Bring it forward now. Good challenge from BKD. Here's the high press that we've been talking about. Just constant challenges. At the moment, just a few wins by Luffer are able to take it out. As Jordy Unknown almost finds a little redirect straight around TDB to send it home. Two minutes 30 gone. 
Portsmouth. This is much better than them considering the, how they were acting in the second half of the previous game. Maybe it's the goal that starts getting them a little bit too cocksure, but Walnut, what a save! It might have ended up in the back of the net, but that was phenomenal from Walnut. The half flip save right there, that was incredible. Oh, that was fantastic. If he wished he could have gotten at least a little bit more power on it to move oh, away yeah. from the net. That's in in the circumstances, that's the best he could do. Unfortunately, the rest of the Portsmouth couldn't quickly follow as Loveborough was piling up with all their free players. And you could see that Meow, basically anyone from that situation, TBD Meow, could have gotten a proper shot at it. And so far, and, and they did. Now TBD in the attack, we rarely see him. Again, it's mostly Meow and Cheggers. But Loveborough, they waited for their chance. They patiently went into the attack. Meow now getting a shot. Jordi no oh. Oh, oh, he was this close to moving it out. But it's off the crossbar, out, and then straight into the waiting hands of a Loveborough player. player or other. Oh, oh, pretty much. We'll, we'll, we'll call it that. I'm, I'm calling this almost as I see him. Uh, if by seeing them, I mean squinting a little bit and mistaking all the players up or all around Loveborough. Well, the biggest lead so far of the series, actually, oh, they're close to increasing it as well. Well, Portsmouth, for the first time themselves, they need to play from behind. And really, previously, all that attacking playstyle, high press, didn't really pay its dividends. Maybe a couple of setups here and there will work in their favor. But Jordy, Jordy needs the support of his team. He's trying to do it all by himself, but I don't, th don't think he will be able to, despite the class of the player he is. I think in terms of Jordy, just need... What? Uh... Okay, there's go there goes my attempt of analysis. I guess I have to go back into play-by-play as TDB tries to get the clear going, but BKD, that's where the high press is, comes in really handy. We're just getting those slightly surprising shots as they break physics and send up in the back of the net. Just as I was trying to say before I was rudely in interrupted BKD. <laughs> Jordi Unknown at the moment, I feel like he's lacking that creative control that he really wants. You know, there there's been quite a few double commits that we both picked up on and noticed on the side of Portsmouth. If they weren't coming in, A, stronger defense on the side of Portsmouth, B, Jordi Unknown feels a little bit more confident about his teammates, a little bit confident in his ability to just sort of do anything he wants up front. And all that culminates into a very, very confident grand champ player who has a lot of mechanical skill behind him. And that could be very helpful for this Portsmouth side as they look to make up this one goal deficit in the last 42 seconds as Jordi hits the crossbar and a lucky bounce off the back of Meow sends her home. We have a tight game with 40 seconds left. Jordi sends up, sets up and I'm not sure how you can actually set something like that up but he sets up a known goal on the other side of the field just like almost like the one he has conceded previously and what a shot it was. Lover gave Jordi a little bit too much space that ball bouncing Nobody on the challenge, and from that spot, ch Grand Champ players are deadly. Yes, Derby had to use the crossbar, but it only made it so more, more, much more efficient, especially if you take the calculated bounce of Meow as well. Are we going to see another 2-2-2 two, two and two overtime? He seems that are mightily close to that one. Lover are not having the same dominate of con uh, domination and control like they did in previous game. No more 14 shots. No, it's much more dead even. Uh, in the game number two, but it still might be theirs to run away with momentum right now on the side of Portsmouth, though, two goals that they scored surely will propel them pretty high. Oh, Ooh. did I speak too oh, early? What? Why do I speak? Why is my, my big mouth betraying me for the third time and every single time in Slovborough? What are you guys doing? What just happened? Zero seconds. Oh Jeez. my goodness. It's Cheggers. Cheggers predicted it. Five minutes ago, he said, all right. Five minutes will pass. I will be in that right spot, right there, waiting for a press for TBB. Best goal so far? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He just comes off the sidewall, gets his a little bit of his nose, just to make sure it doesn't hit the ground. Because I have a feeling that's hitting the ground. That's that's a magic pixel zone sort of ghost yeah, goal. It could have been, been either way, yeah. Exactly. And I think Cheggers just sort of gets his nose under it enough to sort of I, I guess the best word is doink it in, just sort of mm -hmm. the, this world's smallest doink. Which, which sounds very much like an innuendo, but I promise it isn't. It, it's, it's proper terminology uh, for, for that goal, but it looks like, Jam, your prediction so far is coming true. All, oh, you, need, well, all, all you need is Portsmouth to take two games <laughs> from here. 
<laughs> well, you, I think I think you'll notice that both of these games were incredibly close. Portsmouth oh, yeah. almost ran away with the first one, but lost their lead. And then Loughborough on the wings of whatever they have been drinking. Could be Red Bull, could be something else. They've gotten through through the overtime here, though. It, it has been Loughborough who almost, almost lost their control. Uh, but still, that's happy doink at the end. A small doink for Cheggers, but a big, a huge doink for Loughborough, I suppose. But they're going into the game number three, and it's still, despite all of this, it, it could be a 4-0, could be Loughborough just running away with it, uh, and it could be a 4-3. And we still don't know in which favorite could that be, because Loughborough, they have, again, a solid setup. It is Cheggers and Meow. Basically, they, so far, they have been just assisting each other. Meow with five goals already. He is doing work as Cheggers is mostly assisting him or getting his chances here and there as well. TDB just works the defense, try to be that solid third man. On the other side of the field, yes, every single time Jordi Unknown gets the ball, I hold my breath because he has the quality to make almost everything with that ball. Uh, but BKD and Killing Walnut really need to step up because I don't think Jordi Unknown's backpack is big enough to carry both of his teammates. Uh, moment. The game has started once again on the side of Portsmouth. A few starts that we saw. King Walnut trying to find a little bit of creative bumps, get in to open up the net for this Portsmouth side to start scoring. It's truly unknown. Looks for the solo play. Gets it on the backboard, but no one is down the middle to keep the attack on. BKD is there. Misses the challenge as Chegger brings it forward. TDB misses it, but that ends up just being a fake as Chegger continues with the air dribble and pinches it in. Well... So far, I think we've seen it all. Cheggers dropping, dropping, dropping. Ooh, gets, gets a pinch in the end. And is this yet another time? Is Slovero just slob one in the defensive enforcement? And defensive enforcement are not exactly sure how to work with it. Previously, they've been pretty... Oh, another another chip as TBD, I think, will be setting up his teammates. Can he drop it? I'm expecting that to happen. But both Biao and TBD in the air with, I'm pretty sure, Cheggers just staying as deep as possible. He doesn't want any piece of that unless it really falls down efficiently. Look at that. The attacks are still continuing. Lover are trying to put it in. And as a whiff from BKD comes in, those will be, oh, that was an opportunity for Meow. That was opportunity for Jaggers. I think they're being pretty, pretty... Uh, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> they have been pretty forgiving, but you can forgive Portsmouth. When King Walnut can do something like that from in midfield to the other side of the net, top right corner, precisely. Picture wow. perfect. Can get better Absolutely than that. Absolutely picture perfect. Fantastic stuff from Portsmouth to tie up the game. Showing a little bit of their ability to put some team plays together. More of, more of that, please. If you're going to pass, more of that. Oh, Jordy? Okay, I just wanted to give him a little bit of silence to make the moment as epic as possible. But he ends up missing anyway. TDB sends it forward, but Jordy Unknown is there. The high press is going to work as TDB makes a fantastic save on the line. Jordy misses and Cheggers takes it out. BKD is there. Doesn't position himself just right. King Walnut comes through. Still got zero boost, but he's making the zero boost plays as he sends it off the backboard straight into the path of Jordy Unknown. 2-1 Portsmouth. Well, Loughborough doesn't know that Meow decided to risk it, but in that position, you're so vulnerable to a simple chip. And uh, hats off to King Wallen because he held, held his cool and did the chip just at the right moment. He knew that nobody else was, would be able to get that ball, with the exception of his teammate, hopefully coming in. And Jordy read that play perfectly. Borsmouth now with the lead, and they'll be pretty happy with that one. Only halfway through through the game. But they're getting some... They're looking much more alive than they were in the game number two. It was a little bit of a sleeper, but empty net and somebody needs to be there. Forsmouth celebrated their second goal a little bit too long as... Oh, just a series of misses. BRD and King Walnut couldn't challenge it. And this time, despite him being so good in the defense, Jordy just couldn't make it in time. He's trying to do everything on the field. Sometimes it's too much for one poor Jordy. At the moment, nothing really is coming together for Jordy. I, the, the good news is he's trusting his teammates. He's trusting BKD and Walnut to do their job. So so that second goal, that pass into the middle that Jordy put for Walnut, that wouldn't have happened if he didn't trust them. And I'm so glad to see that even after the few mistakes they've had, Jordy's still in the same mindset of trust my teammates, let them do what they want. This BKD, 
almost breaking that trust as he almost put it in the middle for Meow. Big demo by TDB, but King Walnut puts it in the middle. BKD can't challenge that as Walnut sends it up for Jordy Unknown. He drops it down. TDB doesn't make the save on the backboard. Meow doesn't quite get the clearance. He blunt bumps Cheggers. They managed to recover soon enough to prevent any progression forward by Walnut or BKD. BKD sends it across, but TDB, he's read the play nicely. As he sends it in the middle of the wall, but Geordie Unknown cuts it out. Cheggers makes a stop off the backboard. But Geordie Unknown is there. He makes a beautiful read as well. Cheggers recovers. Yes, stop. And TDB will bring it forward from here. But Portsmouth, they are starting to get that tight high press in. Is off the crossbar. BKD shot just about misses. That would have taken them ahead going into the final minute. It doesn't quite work for them. And Portsmouth, they'll have to go back to the drawing board once again. They have some great ideas. And unfortunately, every single time they put all three players up front. As a result, they're so wide open for lower attacks. And if it wasn't, oh, what a good pinch. Straight to Meow, back to Checkers. And I think they will all dribble it. If TDB can get it a little bit to the other direction. But if it wasn't for a little bit of miscommunications here and there, as bounce ball widely bounces in front of Portsmouth, then the Lover would be able to make it. There are a lot of just they're taking each other out. And once again, Portsmouth will be happy with their fourth player on the field, the crossbar and the post. It has been really helping. Oh, is that a passing play? That is for sure a passing play. It's still Checkers and Meow. They're due might be unbeatable if you just put them both of them on a the field the opponents need to tremble as 10 seconds remain dragon and oh no unless unless something drastic happens in those remaining seconds i will i'd hate to be a broken record but we might see another three to two and that's a third one in a row so weird as they break rule one uh, as i've <laughs> corrected so many people now rule one of course keep it off the ground at zero seconds Portsmouth, oh, TDB once two, again. Don't shoot at your own net, that's for sure. Now, now that's, that's uh, when you're locked together, face on. You have to stay in that way. But Jordy okay, Unknown yeah, doesn't want to... three, don't shoot at your own net. You know, you know what? I'm pretty sure that's a safe bet for rule three. There's been no <laughs> arguments about that ever. <laughs> Just don't shoot on your own net. All right. BKD sends it into King Walnut. That's a fantastic shot, but Meow equal to that. Jordy Unknown misses the hit off the wall as TDB will take it forward. It's on the hood. Puts it into Meow. Can't rotate his car in the right orientation to make sure he gets the angle forward. TDB tries to take it off the sidewall, but that's a fantastic challenge. Jordy gets in the way. King Walnut tries to progress back and keep possession. Big demo from Cheggers. Sent out wide off that 50-50. Walnut sends it straight back up. He sends it into the middle. Geordie Unknown didn't expect that. It takes it round one. Cheggers is there, but he's out of the net. It's just a meow once again to beat. And Geordie Unknown trying to get the 1v1 skills underway. Again, gets blocked out. King Walnut back onto the crossbar. Meow is there equal to it. Geordie sends it straight on net. And Cheggers there to stop. Big demo on the line. Has that opened up the net? Not quite. As, as Portsmouth seen off by this Luffer defense yeah even with those two demolitions happening and another happening as well Walnut and the rest of Portsmouth squad are currently playing pretty dirty but even those two demolitions couldn't really give Portsmouth enough of the handicap in the attack as Loughborough did survive in that clear it gave them so much breathing room there's a little bit of revenge but Loughborough's defense can only hold on for so long one, almost, oh. and still, still drops are coming in. Remember, I need to find something quickly in the attack because the any more chances right now. There's finally a proper chance for Lovebird. They finally got their passes in the attack. Previously, too much. I both players going for the same attempt. Players going for the worst uh, attempt at the ball of their team mate could have taken this. I have a much better position. And their rotation also gets them crossed pretty often. Maybe they need a, a flags or a signal of something right there. You just, just pick a slightly different line. 
If Lobra can fix that, I think uh, they will out-rotate their opponent's Portsmouth. But as it happens, we are, have already gone through almost three minutes on the overtime, and there's a th shot. There's the goal. And a 3-2 to two for the third time in a row goes in favor of Lovebro as a little bit of misunderstanding or BKD expecting something. He got tied up in his own controls. Do I go to right? Do I go to left? I don't know. Unfortunately, that results in him seeing the ball sail past and over him as Lovebro take their third win in a row, second overtime. And TDB, as he rightly said, he still hasn't scored a single time. It all has been meow and checkers, checkers and meow. Just want to apologize to everyone watching the stream. I had a few, uh, few moments of lagging out, but um, for fortunately, Jar was able, able to take it as much as you didn't hear it. Um, because <laughs> of lag. <laughs> oh, goodness. It was, it was only that last little, little bit of overtime that, uh, was lagging out. But fortunately, we got back in time, uh, for the final goal to go in. But Loughborough, they, they've come out the gates completely. Th this is something that we didn't expect from Loughborough to be this up for this challenge, but as much of it, look at these teams. TDB was at first the one that I was looking out for to to be leading this side, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's leading from the back perfectly. Mm. It's it's the perfect example of, I guess, the torment esque player from about season four when he was more of a defensive guy than what he is now, being able to come forward and show his offensive prowess. Um, but Loughborough performing beautifully against this Portsmouth side, and they look to be winning this game and booking their spot in the Challenger Bracket Final, which will give them an overall spot of, I believe, seventh off the top of my head. It's what That's this bracket. It's what, it's what this bracket today is uh, deciding, where you come overall in the National League. The top six have already gone through their championship bracket last week. And these guys want their fair share Ooh. of attention as that massive, I guess, redirect from King Walnut just sends it flying into the back of the net off Meow. That's a great 50-50. Meow junks it straight off King Walnut. And BKD, one more time, caught in the spot where he can't really read it. This time, can't really blame him because the shot came out of nowhere. And he just got himself in that one lane that couldn't do anything against that shot. I don't think any, no reaction time could have saved it. Oh, only TDB could have gotten a touch in that. That could have been his first goal. But as a result, he is just content with playing as... I don't think he's too unhappy by not scoring. His team is winning, and as you rightly said, he is building. He's sort of orchestrating his team from the back. And Meow and Cheggers are doing pretty well for themselves on the attacking front. Initially, I was expecting to watch TBD and Jordi Unknown, and I can, I'm still watching Jordi Unknown every single time he gets a touch on the ball. But TBD, he is just... Uh, he's calm, collected. He's still grand champ. I feel like Jordy, in a way, is sort of playing with a point to prove. He he's he is clearly the guy who's been able to lead from the front for this Portsmouth side this entire season. He wants to show off his skills that he's taken on through this entire split and put it into one series. But at the moment, Jordy underperforming slightly. I would say BKD and King Walnut. They've had their moments of. Not really performing as they've allowed this Loughborough team to almost walk all over them sometimes. And at the moment, a one goal lead off a small defensive error. At the moment, King Walnut brings it forward. Very patient players. TDB doesn't have time for patience as he comes forward and blocks out that challenge. King Walnut gets a shot and that is a fantastic shot. King Walnut and BKD. Are they stepping up now? I hope so because with all shots like this we're going to have one hell of a series. Walla doesn't shoot often but when he shoots just look for him to put it with so much power and so much precision on the net of Loughborough that now every single time Walla gets a shot they uh, gets an attempt at the shot at least they should be trembling with fear that's a cannon of a shot and he gets it once again being there quicker than Loughborough and out of nowhere as well that play was slowly building up and then he just knew that he had to be there 
It wasn't Jordy this time. Oh, again, <laughs> Walnut tries to do this. Oh, Demolition almost went for a bump on TBD in the net. That goalie would have been missing. We're Smith fighting back because it couldn't happen any other way. We, we might see another 3-2 to two and, oh, that's a chip. And well, that's a fantastic that's a touch. <laughs> Walnut does it all. Give me a shot. Yes, I'll take a shot. Give me a little bit of a bump right there. He knows that Jordy's over there somewhere. He he can't trust him because Jordy, position-wise, he is pretty much perfect. He will be there waiting for your any of your attempts. I would, I would like Portsmouth maybe to uh, uh, provide Jordy with a little bit more of a pass. Uh, with pass. That was, uh, I think that was exactly what they wanted. But a response okay. come pretty quickly. TBD steals the goal. Uh, a little bit of a dirty, a little bit of a cheeky move, but he'll be pretty happy. He tried to get, oh, well, he, he bumped, uh, he bumped Jordy. He bumped Jordy. Jordy couldn't get there. <laughs> he even thanks him for the effort. And it's a 2-2. We're back in the usual Groundhog Day situation, Dragon. As Loveborough are not allowing Portsmouth to run away with anything. The responses are just getting quicker and quicker from the blue side. I mean, Loveborough, that, I, I don't have a chance to play by play ever. I, 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 don't, I don't get a chance for play-by-play -play ever. BKD <laughs> tries to get this huge clear off the wall, but doesn't get the right touch. He just pinches it off the ceiling and straight down to Meow. That Portsmouth lead, that 2-1 lead that they had a few minutes ago, disappearing into dust before their very oh, eyes as BKD backflips. King Walnut recovers very nicely, sends it down to Geordi. Geordi from the back. Take it forward. Takes it round one. TDB blocks it out. King Walnut is up. Won't get the touch. Able to set up Geordie. Good 50-50 from BKD. will send that forward. King Walnut waiting for the touch. There comes the touch. And Meow almost finds that top corner. TDB sets it up for Meow. Meow just sends it past the post. But TDB is there. Can he find the angle? No, he can't. No one at the back post. To send that home for Loughborough to, to almost secure this lead with a one minute bearing down on us as, as one minute ten is on the clock. Good save from Cheggers. And bring it forward. BKD. Defense on the wall. Jordy. It's a shot on. Straight off the backboard. Walnut is way too high for that. Meow trying to bring it forward. Gets there first. Looking for the second touch. Finds it. Doesn't find the angle though. We'll drop down for TDB to continue this attack. BKD getting the clearance. Has zero boost to really fully continue this attack. And at the moment, this is, seems to be settling around the mid halfway line between these two teams with 30 seconds to go. But between those two teams, 30 seconds is pretty much the prime time for anything to happen. And Portsmouth right now, if if this is now or never, this is their fourth match. If they don't put all the resources up front, they're done. And with BKD, unfortunately, not having the best of the days. And right now, I think it's weighing him down on him pretty heavily. He just wasn't able. Jordy, oh, the Superman mode. All of a sudden, he decides to dribble them all out. Almost there. Nobody for the ball. Nobody kept it up. And for Portsmouth, that was of the utmost importance. Instead... I'm looking at the score sheet, and it's 3-0, 3-2 in the overtime, 3-2 in the regulation, 3-2 in the overtime, and 3-2 in the regulation time one more time. This The only difference, really, the only difference is that this time TDB has scored a goal. Otherwise, it was Meow and Checkers every single time for Loveborough, and on the uh, on the side of uh, Portsmouth, it was either Jordy and King Walnut, Jordy and BKD, Jordy and King Walnut yet again. They just couldn't, just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't push it through. So neither of us were really right with the final score line. But if you just look at those three and twos, those one goal differences, it could have been so much more closer. I feel like we were just lacking the the best of Portsmouth today. I, I, I feel like we were just missing out on BKD stepping out like maybe he's done in previous weeks. I haven't been able to catch any of the Portsmouth games, but it seems like this trio... There was always something there. there. There's clearly something going on with that high press, with a few passes they chuck together a few times a game. This Portsmouth team, I feel like they were just lacking something today, and unfortunately it's really cost them in terms of positioning. But 
I see in chat we've had a we've had a few spoilers. I'm Brad is in chat. He's he's given us the result from the other side of the bracket, Durham versus Derby. If you didn't see the bottom left corner during that that last game, the winners of that match in a 4-0 sweep as well was Durham. So Derby, they'll be the ones in the opposing stream. I believe that was that's Astral. He's in chat. I believe he's taking care of that stream. Um, that would be Portsmouth facing off against Derby for the third place in this challenger bracket. And in terms of the winners bracket, our next match on that will be Durham versus Loughborough. So both those teams heading in to this final, both with sweeps. Well, it's either a promise of another sweep in the finals, or I'm actually hoping for a little bit of a closer attempt. Um, since we haven't seen Derby play it, it's, it could be a different play style. Again, it's how well you mesh against your opponent. Uh, for Lovebro, I think that first first four games could really uh, tell him what, what was going wrong with him. Again, a little bit of miscommunication here and there, I think, was their biggest problem. Other than that, the solid combo of Checkers and Meow can just tear through the opposition with TDB playing from behind. So whatever uh, their opponents, Bradders, uh, Pardox, uh, Darty, and Purtis can put uh, against them, well, it remains to be seen. Well, hopefully we'll get that grand final underway as quickly as possible. It's, it's brilliantly helpful when these teams just decide to sort of get things over very quickly, very nicely. So, uh, Not a fan of game number seven, eh? <laughs> I love a good game number seven, but uh, it has to be at Landon uh, with an incredible crowd with a zero-second oh, goal course. and Shogun screaming, this is Rocket League. So, so, so I, I, I can do a sort of uh, discount Shogun. <laughs> discount Shogun. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was I'm, born in Norwich, so I should be able to do it. This is good. This is Rocket League, just like Shogun. But... All right, I'll, I'll leave it to your play by play, Feral, so you can take the <laughs> This is Rocket League. I'll take something else. Screaming Justin? Um... Mm, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are no Justins. There, there will be a J. Uh, might work. Might work. <laughs> Oh, she, oh, did I? I actually did say the Derby Raptors will be playing, but it won't be the Derby Raptors who will be playing. It's the Durham Defenders, or as they call themselves, again, I'm quickly looking, because they, they are not the Defenders anymore. They're pretty cross about us calling them Defenders. All the other folks calling them Defenders as well. Give me a second. It is the... Oh, it's it's it, it happens when you come in into the league uh, from from outside and know absolutely nothing about it. So folks, if, if anything, blame me. Blade and Jam. Yes, he knows nothing about it. So uh, it was a funny name as well. Uh, Dragon, could you could you please remind me the Durham? What exactly are they? Uh, we had Durham defenders. But it, well, e either for a joke or for proper, they have changed their name to something like Durham Do Doinkadiers. <laughs> Dur Durham. There, there, was, there, there was some ridiculous name and. They were insisting on using specifically that and not not, not their, the one that we have on, on the bracket, of course, in our uh, documents pretty helpfully provided. Wh whoever, whoever composed the full overlook of both of those teams, oh, only four teams that are currently playing. And beyond that, I applaud you because, oh, of course, it, it is the Durham Dingodils or Dingodiles, one Dingodiles. of the two. I'm mean, not sure how serious that is. But I think it's a very si funny. One. It's British University Rocket League. How serious can it be? Uh, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> the university students, they don't take things seriously. <laughs> well, I mean, works for me. It's as, as funny as it gets. Last time, last time I've seen the uh, uh, British universities compete. It was indeed uh, Arrow League, and I, I couldn't quickly find which match that I cast, but one of the last games that I cast it was a uh, game with Jordy and 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 of course uh, the Portsmouth. Not sure if those were the Paladins by that point, but I think that was still Pompey Prospects <laughs> at that, at that uh, point be, in time. Could be, could be, yeah, Portsmouth Pompey, yeah, Port Portsmouth Pompey Prospects, indeed, yeah. Now I remember that. <laughs> it was way back in March. Yeesh. 
That was that was <laughs> memories. Memories indeed. Ooh. Oh boy. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> Did you see that message as well in Rocket League just now? What? That you got kicked. Uh, 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 well, that, that's one thing. Uh, the text in my site said the party was destroyed by a connection error. <laughs> not not that's quite defended, party, just right? like. Come on, Durham, pick it up. You're not defending our party here. You're not defending our party here. No wonder they changed their name to the Dingadiles. I can understand, like, your party was disbanded, but destroyed. A little bit harsh there, Rocket League. That's, that's a tad too crazy. A little bit vicious, anyway, that's think... a little bit vicious. <laughs> I think we'll be pretty happy uh, to get into the action. So, um, I'm pretty sure we can get these teams pretty soon here. They, they had their break. They definitely had their break. Mm, so the lobby's being being created. Those of you who want to know something from the from from the backstage, look behind the scenes as how the tournaments are are being done. We just create lobbies and then broadcast it. That's about it. There you go. You got you got correct names this time, rather than blue and orange. You 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 got Lufra and Durham. Did it did it not show up properly? I th could have been a glitch on your side. I think they've been right for me at least. It's been right for me. It was something I accidentally didn't check on the stream before. <laughs> before I, oh, I bad, took away bad. the cover image. Yep. Um, <laughs> so Lufra versus that. Durham in this final <laughs> best of seven for both these teams before. The last event of this split. We go down to Nottingham for the grand finals. Lancaster versus Loughborough A. How will Loughborough B fare up in their very own final? They've got the attention all fair for themselves. Got quite a few quite a few members of, of the teams showing up in chat. Matt M from the Loughborough A teams coming to support his his boys, boys in blue, as uh, the Rock League shows up. We have Chairman Meow. He, he's hanging out. TDB. <laughs> he's he's hanging out in chat, having a good time on the final day of this winter split. Oh, I don't think TBD will be unhappy about what just happened in their matchup against the Forsyth Paladins. And uh, props to his whole team of uh, just foreowing their opponents, which. We thought it might have been a much closer affair, and it was a pretty darn close affair. But Jordy, BKD, and King Wallet. It was just a little bit too tough for him. This time, though, it is the Durham defenders. Now Dingadils, as, uh, as I've been helpfully pointed out. Again, m must be a joke. So Cinderus, thanks for pointing that out. And hello, everyone in the chat. I'm obviously not from, from around these parts. Not I'm, I'm I'm a foreign boy, but I'm I'm still happy to be back here for the British Rocket League, and it's 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 so interesting to see those little uh, like echospheres of Rocket League. Oh, Another yeah. chance I'm getting from time to time is of course the TCS Esports League, which is the Swiss League, and seeing teams getting together at the start of a season or a league and slowly growing together as a team, not just playing week in and week out. And that I think that that improves the whole. J just gives you such a b bigger improvement just playing the random pickup groups in the tournaments. It, it's a little experience, but here it's it's slightly different, especially if folks uh, in the universities can uh, constantly see each other, can hang around, and just practice whenever they feel like in a more almost like a LAN environment. As, as opposed to the usual, hey, I'm 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 here in Latvia. You're over there in Germany somewhere. Let's play. Well, maybe let's not play. We'll hear each other once in a while. So, things like that, like the NSC League, like the T TCS, like any of those leagues that have been popping up as of late, I think they're giving such great opportunity for local scene to grow. And it is it is it can only bring improvements to the Iraqi League scene, professional scene as it is. And I think it's even better that a lot of those finals are presented in LAN settings themselves. So mm -hmm. you, you don't have to be an RLCS to get that experience of playing in front of a crowd. Just playing a local league, playing the TCS, playing the NSE leagues, even go to some of the local lands that we have, in, have over here in England, like Epic LAN and Insomnia. You get those opportunities to play in front of a crowd, and that is a fantastic opportunity that 
I personally would love to have one of these days. At the moment, it looks like I'm going to be enjoying casting in front of people for quite a number of, of seasons to come before I, before I eventually get good enough to join the upper echelon of Rocket League. But you know what? We have a fantastic game for these guys. Fantastic opportunity to sort of one last time this split show every other team what they can do. Loughborough facing off against Durham in the last game of each of these teams' season. It's a pretty joyous occasion as well, but if, if you can be on the field, uh, I feel like the second best thing is being in a caster booth and uh, just seeing this from the best spots ever on the stadium. It's the front row seat. It's the front row yeah, seat. So that's, that's my favorite, and they, they're letting me do this, so hurrah to that meow of the pass from Cheggers. Oh, pass. Oh, stops him. That was Darren Close Lovebro trying to get the control of this game right where we start. So Atlas, Champs, and Crocs for the um uh for durham I, I'm, I'm once again looking at completely the wrong team derby <laughs> raptors are pretty cool but no it is the durham university the defenders are playing they're on the field and right now defending pretty well against their opponents love run. it's like they're trying to get a little bit of a triangle set up in between up front just small passes set up but love run, they're having none of those attacks you can see the triangle Trying to get into play as Crocs tries to get a pass across, but Jeggers, Meow, and TDB link up together and show how you really pass and smash it straight into the back of the net. TDB was so hungry for another goal after for his first one in the previous series, and that little bit of a almost like a staircase. Oh, there's an attempt by Atlas. A little bit of a staircase that passes from Cheggers to Meow to TDB as you're moving along the field. Yes, Durham had their triangle approach to the attack loveborough just do a one two three and oh it suddenly ends up in your net great starting goal from loveborough and great just attempt as a team previously not always connecting this time everyone in place and everyone pretty happy with the result i think it's a little bit scary if they're they're treating that first game as a warm-up series what do we have in store if these guys have finally warmed up together but we'll see how the game progresses as Loughborough they find it in the orange half and take it forward Atlas on the backboard trying to bring it out but the 50-50 just sends it across the pitch Crocs some massive clearance upfield as it drops down straight in front of the net TDB is not doing anything it neither is Cheggers and HT Champs finishes it off for the tight game Someone needed to get us. Someone. Cheggers, I think, was backwards, so it wasn't his ball. TDB needed to go for that one. Instead, is a land of confusion for Loveborough's defense. And they had all the time to clear it as well, but champs just see it. Yep, it's it's still there. It's still there. It's, nobody's taking it. Somebody Aww. ought to take it. Oh, Atlas. Atlas too deep. What was Atlas doing on that one? I'm actually trying to figure out. No boost, but oh, some boost at least. No, uh, just back. Back just, nah, trying to guess, tr tr trying to get in a position, but by the time he finally got into it, it just was a little bit too late. S straight answer from Loveborough. They have never waited for an answer in their series against Port and Paladins. They're not waiting for answers yet <laughs> here either, <laughs> as TBD is going for a little bit of a hunt of the defenders of Durham. Couldn't find in that attempt, but every single time now, if they see TDB, they should be aware of the fact that he can easily just come and disrupt the defense just like he just. It's just the, the Grand Champ mechanics of smashing it straight to any part of the net that he wants. <laughs> As Loughborough, they're putting on the high press now. They've got their confidence up, but sometimes it unravels slightly as Atlas brings it forward. Can't find the angle to send it into the open net, but he is able to bring it up the backboard, and TDB gets in the way, but HT Champs, he's also there. Meow on the backboard blocks any progression there. It's a constant rotation from these teams. It's been beautiful to play in terms of defense from this Lepra side. Great communication from them to make sure they stay disciplined in the back. It's Meow missing out on the center as Crocs tries to bring it forward. Cheggers is there on the loose ball, but Atlas without a challenge. TDB, a little bit of patience. He takes it past one, can't take it by two. Meow gets the challenge in. That's an open net. 
But unfortunately, Durham cannot find the shot to send that one home. And quickly move out of their own half, and Loughborough has their time to return back in the challenges in the midfield. Still another weakness from Lovra, I feel, is the long rotations that they take. If they could have cut the rotation in half many of those times, they could have hit their opponents. And right now, Durham is finding chances out of nowhere as Lovra, once again, their defense is solid. Or from those couple of moments where all of a sudden they get a, a little bit of a derp moment and the defense just all it completely falls apart. You should be really aware of what's happening there. Oh, and yeah, also. Mm, and once again, defense left, goal open, a little bit too slow. Durham themselves weren't believing their luck. And as a result, Loughborough with 60 seconds to spare are still in the lead. But Durham piling in on the pressure. And once again, no challenge. Where is the challenge? Durham missing their chances. And now the attack goes the other way. Loughborough might count themselves lucky. They are currently surviving this as Durham are trying to put every single opportunity up front just to bring him back to a tie game. Durham have used a lot of patience to get sort of the opportunities that they need, but unfortunately part of that patience has sort of stopped them from completely going all out and getting as many goals as they possibly can as Loughborough. They'll look to end this game. 2-1 ahead as TEB, very cheeky little wow. flicks to make sure he keeps possession. We've hit triple zeros, Meow will backflip, Durham will bring it forward but no one is close to that and TDB knocks it away, lets it bounce and Loughborough take game one. I can't can give enough credit for what TDB done in the defense. Yes, he couldn't put a touch, yes, he didn't put the touch on the net, but he flipped it away from every single Durham player that was around. And as a result, and close to the wall as well, so no chances for the Orange squad to bring the ball out to the other side of the field quickly enough. So TDB not only killed this game with his two goals, he also killed the timer with with great precision. Didn't need to take the shot, just needed to keep it keep keep it away uh, from Durham for as long as possible. It's still not a runaway victory for Durham. Unfortunately, have been given their first defeat, that sweep that they got in their semifinal uh, against uh, Derby Raptors. Now a long, long thing. But I'm enjoying this. So, uh, Dragon, would you say you were in Loughborough's camp when it will come into to winning this, or do you think Durham might take this? Loughborough fantastic in the previous series. It looks like they've taken some of the momentum in this one, sort of the confidence, especially inside of Meow and Cheggers, has definitely been taken from the previous series into this one. TDB, he's picked it up, certainly. He's got, he's got one goal in his side that he wants to go all out now and continue his scoring spree. At the moment, it looks like we've had a mid-series substitution, which is not against the rules. It's completely fine. We have Mordisha coming in for... Well, well, the, the mid-series sub, uh, not quite coming to plan. <laughs> Mordisha yeah, coming in for Crocs and <laughs> TDB. That is a phenomenal dunk, actually. That's a fantastic read. Uh, that's that's a grand champ for you. And Mordisha, exactly the... Made that goal happen for Lover as a series of bounces goes here and there straight into TDB, who rushed from the midfield with all the boosts, all the speed. And got that in. That's a perfect opening for a Loughborough as their opponents Durham didn't commit a player for the kickoff. So Loughborough were, uh, were easily able to do a cheat up and then send the ball straight down to the net where a double commit from Durham and meant that any attempt by Loughborough, any player that was close enough, and TDB made themselves pretty close enough, made sure that that was not only a shot but also a goal opportunity. Well, now comes the now comes the ever ever present question of can Loughborough hold on to this lead? Previously, they definitely could. This time, all well, the momentum is still in their hands. The passing player are working, and it's still Cheggers and Meow. It's still the combo to look out for. Although the TDB has been so far scoring all the goals for Loughborough, so maybe uh, the combo of Cheggers and Meow. Meowers? Chambers? No. I, I shouldn't make up nicknames for them as I go. But they can just take a, um, a back foot and start playing a little bit of a defense, whereas TDB is still 
Currently, he wants all the goals now. He is in the attack constantly. The duo of Meow and Cheggers are in the back, just collecting all the mistakes, all the balls, all the crosses that Durham are trying to put, but never are able to take control on the other side. Luffer, they find themselves on, on the back foot. At the moment, they, they seem to be dealing with it comfortably. Until then, it just popped out in front. No one was able to get out and make the challenge. As it looked like both Cheggers and Meow just sitting happily on the back line. But you cannot let that happen at this level. 105 kilometers per hour, you can see at the bottom of the screen. That is fast. And that's going straight into your top shelf. You're not, not getting there in time. You have to put a challenge on to make sure that doesn't go in. Loughborough, this is pretty common for them. They drop a goal. Maybe drop a few, but they seem to be able to get back, get the scoring going as Mordisha almost gets the leading goal for this Durham side. HT champs puts, gets red and it's put into the middle. TDB is there, Mordisha! Fantastic save on the line. And HTC brings it forward. Good patience into the middle to Mordisha. Mordisha sends it out wide, but that fantastic read from Atlas puts it into the mill. He misses the shot. It's into the mill. Mordisha off the crossbar and out for Loughborough. Atlas. That, that fake out almost worked for uh, Durham as the initial shot. Everyone was thinking that it would be AT Champs putting the shot on target. Instead, uh, they held, held it off and almost got that goal. Lover are being tested, but right now it's Durham on the other side of the field. The passers are coming in TDB. Oh, off the post. And will this be a goal? This must be a goal. Durham it were out easy. of their defenders. Everyone was gone to the rapture. And for TDB, is just a great side of first teammate. Fantastic movement from Cheggers. So just running across net, making sure... Oh, if anyone's here, I'm just going to destroy them. TDB mm. decided... Nah, don't worry, Cheggers. I'll just pin this, <laughs> this, this guy to the wall. Make sure he doesn't come across. And Meow says... Yeah, I'll just shove it in the net, guys. Cyberbullying. I, th I, th I thought we were trying to <laughs> eradicate that, but even here, my God, no, stop. Stop the cyberbullying. Stop the bumps, the demolitions, and pinning the guy to a wall. <laughs> well, Lovebro put themselves in their comfortable position with one goal difference. That's, well, that's... how they've been playing all this time. The, and might end up, once again, if, if we'll have another Groundhog Day with a different scoreline, I'll only consider this being the norm by this point. Well, Two one at the moment. If they stay this way, then Loughborough have a chance of going on for the four zero two one series as opposed to the three two four zero series. Jaggers takes forward. HC champs. That's phenomenal control, but unable to drop it down to his fellow attackers. TBB will take it out. HT champs sends it along the backboard. Anyone there? Not quite. Jaggers doesn't quite. Use his time wisely. Sent across, but Meow gets clearance. Cheggers keeps up in the air. What can TDB do? Waits for the touch of Atlas. Sends it across. Can't find the far corner. Atlas will take this out. Meow gets in the challenge. Mordisha sends it out. Atlas going together with HD champs, but Durham come, they come away with the ball. They have a one goal deficit. Can they find the goal they need here? No, they can't. No one's in the center for HD champs to. Send it into. TDB denies po denied possession. And Durham will come forward once again. This has been great work from Durham. They've been easily able to get out of their own half. And they need to make sure that all of them are there for their follow-up attacks. Make sure that they can find this one goal to make up this deficit. 50-50 goes into the middle. HT Champs covers it. Straight into the middle. Who's going to cover that? More dish it is. It's TDB. Denied possession once again. Not to the mill. Meow gets in the way of TDB, but TDB is patient. Allows the touches to happen. Gets a shot on target. That will drop in. 3-1 in favor of Loughborough. The 2-1 sweep is denied. And Loughborough, they take game two. Oh, and I'm, I'm slightly disappointed, actually. They just could have kept it like that. One save, one save was all I will be asking Durham. But Loughborough, I think, pretty well outplayed Durham there. 
at the end of that match, HT Champs seemingly was trying to do everything himself. He was trying to set up the plays. He was rushing to all the position. He was doing really well in the attack, constantly stealing all the boosts on Loughborough's side. But at some point when the Grand Champ tries to play at the Grand Champ pace, his uh, or her his champ buddies just can't keep up. And while well, he's expecting upper, uh, like his, uh, he's expecting his teammates to be there, not not everyone can make that read, and always you can make make the place as fast as HG champs in this case are trying to to make them happen. As a result, is just TBD getting his shots, Miao getting his opportunities as well, and Loveborough just continuing the solid play. As Durham, despite being pretty well with their own opportunities, many of them just gone slightly bagging. It wasn't even the precision. It was mostly the finishing. There was n almost never a player to finish the attacking maneuvers for the Durham side. Definitely. Th th this Durham side, they found it easy to escape their half. Lepera doesn't employ the same press that their previous opponents, Portsmouth, do. But at the moment, Durham don't have the movement upfield to make sure they're all there to support each other, to make sure a ball finds itself in the back of the net. Game three about to start. I would say that here, this has to be the moment that Durham starts to play up. It looks like we've had another substitution as Crux comes in. I'm not, not sure about the rules on that, but they are subbing out different players. So I, I think we're okay. I'll have to check afterwards, but... Durham seems to be treating this like a tryout, and why not? You're, you're facing against other teams. If you end up losing, it doesn't matter. There's next split to come up. So this Durham team looks like they're sort of trying out each other, seeing how they play against different level opponents. At the moment, Loughborough has the control in this series as Meow sends it high, but TDB is there to finish it. No, he isn't. He's there to hit the crossbar as well. HD Champs sends it upfield. Jagers denies the pass to Crocs. Double commit in the corner by Loughborough, who's going to recover in time. Mordisha is, just doesn't quite get the dodge quite right. HG champs, sit in the middle. Matt M, thank you very much for saying that subbing players is fine. We're all good here. It's Mordisha, keeps it out of the corner, but Cheggers makes sure it stays in. Croc sends it off the crossbar, that's another chance for TDB. Blocked out by HT champs. But still, Loughborough able to come forward as Durham. Don't move players upfield in time to move the pressure along. TDB and Cheggers come together. Try and pinch that one into the back of the net. Doesn't quite work. And Loughborough, they are still unable to crack this Durham defense. Still, look at how close they get. Maybe a little bit optimistic on those try pinch the ball together in the air kind of style. It's game number three. It's not the time to be doing something like that. Especially knowing that the sweep, reverse sweep, in whatever sense it might happen, it's still on the books. But their attacks are solid. They're constantly hitting and put uh, hit, hitting the ball in awkward positions for Durham defense to deal with. And speaking of Durham defense, oh, there was none for just for a second. And they're getting closer to scoring that first one. I'm feeling a couple of more shots from the waterfall, and I think they will be able to get it as long as they commit enough players up front. As long as they believe that the mistakes or uh, might happen from Durham side or Durham uh, might miss a ball or two here and there. Then Lumbra will be getting their first goal. Durham currently playing slightly... Well, they're, they're being outpaced on the field, that's for sure. Lumbra start trapped in their own half. They has been a point about this Lumbra B team, the Lumbra ball chases. They do seem to struggle slightly to... Move themselves out of their own half as slowly but surely the boost ticks down and Mordisha finds the shot to send it into the back of the net. And that is one goal in favor of Durham. Loveborough putting two players on the same ball, not because it was a double commit, but because neither of them could properly clean up the ball using all the boost to get in the air and get that. As TDB tried to make the final effort challenge couldn't get it either Mordisha with a great positioning and in the attack that's exactly where you want it to be on that angle waiting for bounces to come your way as a result Durham opened the scoring 
and hey, well, you said Durham needs to strike right now, start playing as and uh, as a as a solid team to have any chance of coming away with something in the series. Well, that was their opportunity. Catch Loughborough on their mistakes. Even with that sweep that they did previously, they are definitely not infallible. Oh, although this might fall straight in the hands of TDB, or at least his teammates. Oh, he's waiting. He's still waiting. Loughborough on the attack. Playing from behind, though, not always their forte. Let's see if Durham can give them those chances. TDB takes it off the back wall with a little ceiling touch, but HT Champs moves it on to Mordisha. The small link-ups between these Durham players has been wonderful as Crocs sends it into HT Champs off Mordisha on the back wall. Nothing coming of that, but keep it going. It's it's something that Loughborough has to think about when they're on the de defense, not quite on attack, as TDB blocks our pass, and it's all three up as Modisha commits as the final man. And we have a tied game with one minute five to go. And props to Cheggers for beating two players of Durham with that hit off the wall. At some point, your 50-50 will be against TDB, and that's where the mechanics of a Grand Champ player would come into play. Just a little touch, but that's was all that was needed for Durham uh, to suddenly be with their pants down, caught as Loughborough tied up, and TDB and his squad. TDB has been scoring. Oh, that's his fifth goal in the series. He has been feeling it. But even if TDB stops scoring, I, Cheggers and Meow are still there. They have been quiet Ooh. throughout the whole Lover Durham matchup. Oh, this is this is not good. Oh, that was wasn't good either from Crocs. But even if TDB's goals suddenly dry out, Cheggers and Meow are still there. And I'm hoping it, it's it's not because their goals have dried up. I think they can still come back into this one. Or perhaps it is indeed that Cheggers and Meow passing playstyle was isn't working against Durham that well. One thing I know for sure, Lovebro is still up in the series. One of those final 10 seconds, we'll be looking to put the ball away from there as far as possible. As Cheggers trying to do this all by his lonesome. Oh, there's a combo. There's a combo. Cheggers, demolitions, demolition. Will he drop on the player? He almost dropped over there. But that's our first overtime of the series. Lovebro partly surviving this because Durham really were in control, shaky control as it was. But Lovebro managed to bring this in the overtime one more time. As they do, and now it's their game to take. Durham on the transition upfield as HT Champ stays with the ball, trying to get a doink assist into the middle. <laughs> Odisha takes it forward, and it would find that second part of the pop and shot to send that one home. Still tie game. Cheggers, that's a very dangerous touch straight into the middle. But it'll somehow work out as Meow brings it forward. Off the waterfall, TDB's there, but HT Champ reads it first. Off the ceiling. One touch to send it down, but blocked out by Cheggers. TDB sends it forward. Cheggers, slight redirect. Crocs there for the save. And Loughborough keep possession of the ball. The very shaky possession. Cleared out field by Durham. HD Champs has a shot, doesn't find it. That's an incredible save with the shot, Modisha. Meow can't find the sharp field. We still have a tie game with 1 minute 10 gone. Crocs almost getting bumped by Meow there. That would have been a great little assist from Meow to find that bump if it just went in. HD Champs trying to get the very difficult mechanical shot going on there. Cheggers brings it forward. Can't find the pass to Meow. HD Champs. It's Durham's turn to take it forward. It's Mordisha off the wall. Sends it down. Past Meow. There's Crocs, but Cheggers is there first. And 1 minute 40 gone from this overtime. We still have this tie unbroken. But what a tie it is. I still don't know what happened in that uh, shot where Durham, where, where uh, AG Champs were dropping it down off a guess. He pre jumped that attempt from the corner and then bounces here and there off the crossbar into the Lovebro player and out. It was quite confusing, but wow, so much energy from both of the teams. And those passes, oh, they're actually working. Better be careful, not shoot on your own net, but seemingly by, uh, for Lovebro, that's the only thing that remains for them. Durham's. Durham's approach to the attack is currently immaculate, and those shots are still coming in. Now it's Mordisha trying a little bit of a HT Champs 
tile play. Balls are still bouncing. Shots constantly finding their way in front of Love Brunette. They need to be much more careful. One of these will go in if they don't challenge it quickly enough and if they don't put the players to counteract those moves. At the moment, it's definitely Durham looking the most likely to score as Loughborough struggled to find their chances during this game. Crocs, was that a save? My goodness, Crocs just finding an extra little touch that would have definitely put off the Loughborough team. But he might have just saved the attempt with his lack of sight. It's just the slight touch he needed in that situation. It's Durham. They haven't broken the deadlock, but they still look like the most likely to do so. It's that stop prevents TDB from doing it himself. Crocs tries to get a clear, but Meow gets a stop. Morticia is up. Good redirect to safety. Cheggers is there. Sends it back home. Meow. Now it's possession of the ball. Slow, calm, methodical with the ball, but just their touch was too heavy there. Straight into the path of HD champs. Looking for the touch into Mill, but Crocs is there as well. This is great offensive rotations on the side of Durham. Making sure that Loughborough, A, don't have enough time, and B, they try to find those very creative passes that will open up the net for them. Almost four minutes of overtime here, and we still have the deadlock intact. We're just both watching that play unfold. Loveborough setting up their passes up the back wall. But despite all three players, I think, being in a perfect position to make an attempt at that, Durham holds on strong. More drops are coming in. Is TDB coming in? Oh, yes, he is, but not, not strongly enough. Loveborough's, Loveborough is still looking for their one quick chance because they have been on the back foot. Oh, and that skip. HHM just wanted to get a little bit of a doink and send it to the net. At least allowed the ball to bounce through as Loveborough would commit on him. Not being able to get it either. Passes. That's one way to get it into the net. For, for Durham, it's always slightly short. And then every single time, their defense is so open for, for a counterattack. Loveborough so far couldn't use those opportunities. Seems that the chances have almost switched here as Loughborough. They're starting to look very positive towards... Well, at least now, towards and slightly after now, the five-minute mark. Mordisha sends it lightly forward in the path of Crocs, but Cheggers gets the lucky respawn right there. HD Champs sends it out wide. Meow gets a shot on target, and HD Champs can't recover in time. And five minutes, 15 into this overtime, two goals to one in favor of Loughborough. Oh, how unfortunate can you be when that cross goes straight to the player you've just demolished, and then trying to remove that ball from a defense you put it to the easiest side you can put it to and then there's immediately an attacking player meow's read of that play was perfect he knew that he needed to attack he knew that he needed to get straight back into Durham side and together with checkers they did just that love bro wow that is yet another overtime something about love bro and the overtimes just goes together like things that go together i suppose <laughs> but it is 3-0 in the series for loveborough and despite all their misgivings despite there are still problems especially in the defense sometimes too much confusion in defense for loveborough resulting in goals from their opponents too much confusion in the attack where double commits are made when there no double commits are needed just call out your place Yes, sometimes TDB it just is... Too, oh, actually, no, it's not even TDB. It's usually TDB who's in a great position to get into, onto a touch. And these are Meow or Cheggers coming in slightly prematurely or over-eagerly. And as a result, neither of them get a proper touch and a number lose their opportunity in the attack. But with whatever they have for the third time in a row in this series and for the seventh time today... Lovrev uh, declared themselves the winners. Now only one more game remain. Durham, show us what you got. Otherwise, it will be Lovebro laughing all the way to the bank with their eight wins on a day and nobody being able to stop them. Starting off with Lovebro on the back on their back wheels. HC Champs sends it forward. Mordisha is there, misses the redirect. But HT Champs still brings forward possession. 
Chegas makes the defensive touch. It's all three Loughborough players find themselves in the same half of the field in terms of width-wise. And separate out a little bit more. Meowth sends that one forward towards Chegas. Chegas fakes it, and the second touch can't be found. TDB can't find another shot. Chegas back on defense. Crocs blocks it out. It looks like it's falling into the mill. Mordisha is there, misses the shot. And keep on going, Loughborough. Just a minute gone. Looking very positive in this game for Durham. Need to perk up. They're going to win this all-important game for them. And Atlas is sitting out this game for, I think that's the second game in a row that he's sitting out. Durham are believing that Marisha Crocs and AT Champs will be the squad that will try and get them that first win. But for Lovebro, there's a lot of stuff clicking in the attack right now. Those little inventive plays that they're doing, uh, really pulling it out of nowhere and making sure that they are, they, they, they know what play will be happening. So those little skip, skip the ball to your teammate, allowing them to get so close to the Durham's net that Durham must be counting their blessings so far, Bass. Nothing has gone in so far. Meow, oh yes, that's the angle. And that's not a goal. I'm slightly disappointed that would have been a beaut. Instead, it's just tickled the nerves of Durham one more time. Durham, they're, they're worried at the moment. They're not playing as freely as they previously were. And it seems to be all in an effort to try and make sure they take this win. But at the moment, just play with no fear. Take it forward. They were trying to do just that. They have been able to score against this Loughborough side, but they can't do it at the moment. They're being a little bit too passive in their defensive play. Not finding their way upfield. As Loughborough, they'll continue this midfield defense. This barrage of shots coming in. But now finally a little bit of respite for Durham. But as the demo comes in, Meow is able to take back possession for Loughborough. HD Champs sends a shot upfield. It's just why TBB doesn't make the clearance. Crocs is there. 1 0 Durham. Wow, after that prolonged attack by Lovebra, I was expecting them to open up the scoring, but it only takes one. In this case, that's only one miss from TBB, who couldn't get any attempt at that one going backwards. Perhaps he complicated it for himself. But Durham survived that. Basically, they survived that getting low on boost constantly being pressured those shots were just getting harder and harder but they persevered and seemingly their defense was a bit convoluted but as they held on and they used their first proper opportunity in the game they opened up the scoring and love bro have to play from behind yet again as Durham they play might get a little bit more nervous one more time now they know for sure that the lead needs preserving Durham Unable to take it up properly this time as Crocs takes control on the back wall. Can't take it past me hours. Mordisha takes a light touch. Sends it forward to Crocs into the middle. HT Champs didn't quite read the play. TDB gets in the way as Meow brings it forward. Mordisha makes sure the touch on the side of Meow doesn't go through. It's Crocs playing on the backboard. HT Champs sends it clear. Crocs is there, gets a 50-50, drops down in front of TDB, nothing going in, HG Champs sends it up to Crocs, HG Champs is there, sends it wide though, Meow can't get a proper backboard clear going, double commit on the side of TDB and Cheggers, it's a great moment for Durham to try and move forward with the ball, it's a little bit slow at the moment, Crocs moves forward, TDB gets a massive clearance, Mordisha sends it up, Crocs redirects it down. Cheggers makes a stop. Big demo. Moves in front, into the middle. HT Champs gets a clear. Crocs is there though. The last 31 seconds going down. This be a great opportunity for Durham to score and seal this victory in against this Loughborough side. Who have been very tough to score against all evening. Getting pretty close with their attempts, but the timer's running out of them, and I think they're feeling it. That their shots are not getting as close as we would have wanted. Another series of mistakes here and there. 
And if this one be it, Owen and TDB one more time with a tight miss. Checkers with an opportunity, dropping down, but dropping down on the floor and not into the net. Durham finally break the the complete control that uh, the little bro a ball chaser had so far on the bracket. So the sweep has been denied. And Durham are the first team today that could beat the Loughborough. Well, with it. Still, the margins are tight. They can't get tighter than this. 1-0 is as good as, good as it gets. Loughborough just, just couldn't figure it out. Just uh, in the end, their Cheggers and Meow are still a little bit quiet. It's just not working out for them. We might have... A... <laughs> Mm, we might have a server change if the players desire to do that. Right now, they're all, pretty much everyone. Everyone is in the equal position, with the exception of TDB. <laughs> He's pretty happy with his thing. <laughs> everyone else might be slightly disappointed as to uh, what's happening. But it's 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 up for our teams to decide that. We we definitely yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I, th I, th I think I think it's only reasonable. Uh, try to find a different server. Everyone wants to play Rocket League this evening. We are not the exception. And perhaps um, servers are a little bit on fire. It's a possibility. Uh, Mesh RL's uh, throwing accusations against his uh, colleague from Loughborough TDB about lag switching. Don't think he has control, that much control over the servers, but uh, maybe he does. Absolutely spooky, boys. Absolutely spooky, but spooky. Great confidence from from Durham. Sort of hang in there with only one goal, but not only that, they kept on pressing, kept on pushing for that second goal, which held back uh, the Loughborough their Loughborough opponents really well. Actually, it's the best form of defense is offense sometimes, and that game was definitely a part of it. He th this Durham side. So they wanted to push forward, try and get more goals. And because of that, it held Loughborough back into their own half. And when they did get forward, Durham were patient. They waited, make sure they got the best touches they could. And that's what allowed them to transition as best as possible. It looks like everyone has joined back now. And we're ready to go for game five. Yeah, I would I would agree with the fact that Durham's attack didn't allow Loughborough to maybe spread out as much as they would have wanted and <laughs> uh, and get get themselves uh, going as is. Yeah, and TBD somehow gets the worst ping out of them all this time. So, I mean, it's it's equal. It's equal in the end. But this little tiny break, I think, will hurt Dur might hurt Durham in the end as uh, all all of that elation that they got from their victory. Maybe it's currently a little bit put on hold as Loughborough will be restarting the whole thing. Now that they got those five minutes one more time, it will not allow that lead to or that game to slip away from their fingers. You already can see that in their attacking pressure. They're trying to set up one after the other. Oh, TDB. Oh, what oh, a play that's very was. Patient. He didn't score himself, but he outplays the opponent. He waits. He didn't doesn't take the Im immediate shot. He just, oh, just a little chip. I love it. Just waiting that slight bit moment to see how your opponent's going to commit allows the net to open up a lot more. And as that was the last man, that was the perfect time to bring it out and put it in the back of the net. Now Crocs, he's waiting on the back, on the side wall. HT champs, 50-50 and send it into the middle. Cheggers, self, tries to put it in the middle, but Mordisha sends that out. Kind of almost looking at a classic game one as these teams send it back and forth with about 100% more demos involved TDB off the backboard HT champs that's wonderful reading of the play straight up on the backboard making sure that isn't an easy shot Mordisha goes off the backboard themselves doesn't find the the fruit of a goal available but that's a massive clear up field Mordisha shoots post just slightly off target this been a curse for Durham as well. They've been able to create the chances, but not being able to completely finish them off. And there's Loughborough one goal ahead. That might come back to bite them. That completely open net miss from Mordisha. 
Yeah, you don't get that many chances in a game, especially with how close both Slobro and Durham were in previous game. Three shots versus four, if I'm not mistaken. So it just, you won't get an opportunity like that for a long, long time. But this only shows how how much both these teams open up their defenses with their attacks. And the game just is going non-stop with everyone moving from one side of the field to the other constantly. Which is generating those chances, but it's generating chances on the both sides. The ones, as Loveborough are getting their opportunities with an empty net on one side, and then they put all three players up front, then Durham immediately gets the other one, vice versa. It keeps repeating. It's never-ending cir uh, circle of Rocket League. And right now, Durham, well, not exactly connecting with it. And boy, they would want to connect, because half, half of the game gone, three shots to their name, but they wouldn't want a goal as well. Otherwise, they'll be out of it completely. Lobro playing from defense right now, not over committing, but also not committing for the challenges as much. Letting HD champs do his thing might prove costly in the end. At the moment, this Durham side lacking the one goal that will tie them up, but they aren't lacking in pressure as HD champs brings it forward, pins it across the backboard. Mudisha can't find the angle. Come in on from to get the shot on target. Cheggers continues to pass on from TDB. AC Champs will bring it out of defense as Meow decides not to challenge. Which ended up being the smart choice. I don't think he had much of an opportunity to score off the infield pass as AC Champ misses the first shot. Can't find the angle on the second. And Loughborough get away with another one to clear a sent forward. Crocs. Sends it straight down to the mill. Meow is there. Gets the dunk into the mill. And Mordisha is there as well. Mordisha brings it forward patiently. Gets the flick past TDB. But Cheggers rotating around the back very nicely to make the stop. AC Champs. It, this pressure is continuous from Durham. We've skipped the point of smashing it back and forth. Durham is starting to be the ones to gather that constant pressure that they're going to need to score but with a minute left they're going to have to hurry up it's all well and good being very patient just as TDB gets a shot on target HD Champs is back with this patience it can cost you if you take too long to find the right moment and that's at the moment the story of Durham's game in this game 5 as Loughbrooks gets it clear but not for long There it is. The patience it pays off. They find their opportunity and Mordisha sends into the back of the net. We have a tight game with just under 30 seconds to go. I think the substitution Mordisha for Atlas was the correct one and Durham will be pretty happy. Mordisha basically uh, really set up the play for Durham for a duration of the past three or so games. And that shot that uh, was given, ooh, beautiful. HG Champ scored something like that previously for Durham. The same spot for Loveborough seems to be their kryptonite as their defense fall apart just a little bit, but it's the timer is still not over. It's for HG Champs, the angle, not exactly right for him, but as the ball is stuck on the blue side of the field for Loveborough, no chance to bring it to the other side for Durham, no chance to score it in regulation for the Fourth time today, Dragon. We are going into the overtime just because we like it so much. Just because we need extra time to figure out who is the winner and who is not. For Lovebro, oh, it is their lifeline, really. They they, they might have barely escaped. And this is the lifeline oh. that they take immediately. I wish we would see another five minutes of Rocket League or even ten or even more. But as Mordisha gives it to the team, Mordisha slightly takes it away. Loveborough, I'd say deserved winners, despite all the shortcomings and misgivings, despite TDB falling a little bit in class as this match went on. Even the man himself doesn't have all the stamina to go through the whole thing. It was just enough as Meow and Chaggers finish it up for Loveborough, but bravo to the Mordisha, Champs, Crocs and Atlas who of course has been playing for Durham in the starting uh, matches of the series for still being toe-to-toe -to -toe with incredibly strong opponents, Loughborough. This is breaking a massive curse for Loughborough. The past few seasons, they've just been second 
always the bridesmaid, never the bride. They've got themselves into the National League Championship final. They got themselves to this final and they won. For the first time, a Loughborough team has got made it to a final and taken it in this age of Arrow League and NSE. This is a fantastic prophecy for the A team this weekend. A team, get watching. This is how you win a final, boys. This is how you win a final. You have a tough match coming up against Lancaster, but it's all about the Loughborough Bull Chasers this game as they finish off Durham four games to one in that series. It was an interesting show, uh, really, both uh, when it's a Loughborough Bull Chasers. Portland uh, Paladins and of course here with Lovra we're off against Durham Defenders is watching uh, the Grand Champ players on all three sides and you, you could you could almost see that uh, Grand Champs were making the the only correct decision in that moment and quite often their teammates were also there but slightly late slightly from a wrong angle but still pretty happy to be making that challenge it sometimes it made or uh, broke uh, the play but it still it shows the the chasm between the grand champs and the champs and I, i've been pretty impressed by all of these players of course but the grand champs still are a little bit but in league of their own of course it, the, the grand champ level of play is this is a massive skill gap. There are a lot of skill jumps that you have to make on your journey to get into Grand Champ. Like the, like the jump between Diamond and Champ 1, Plat to Diamond. But the biggest jumps occur in every single one of the Champ ranks. Going from Champ 1 to Champ 2, Champ 2 to Champ 3, Champ 3 to that Grand Champ level. And you could see the difference in the terms of the players. TDB was able to identify when he could be patient, when he could sort of sit back with the ball and say, all right, your move, come get me. And, of course, Jordy, in the previous game, he knew when, ah, Walnut's in the middle, smash him a pass, Walnut smashes it home. These skill jumps, you could tell today, where these grand champs were able to stand out and play above the rest. And it was incredibly good to watch, especially for these lower ranked players that get to play alongside those grand champs, sort of see the decisions they make every single time. And in, and really, we champions. They're, all of these players are champions. Some champ one, champ two, champ three, but champs nonetheless. So as it's uh, for me, it's still not lower rank, but as you said, there there's bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, champion, and then there's grand champ, which in itself is such a gradation. And going from all the all the new peeps who got there all the way to the RLCS players. But I'm hoping, I'm only hoping that HD champs, uh, that uh, Jordi unknown, and that of course uh, TDB will be able as captains of their respective teams or actually crox is the uh, captain for durham defenders so i mean that that works out for him but they will be able to lead their teams to the the greater heights in the seasons to come and perhaps stick 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 with these squads that are right now because the longer you are sticking as a team i think the better results are there and tdb with his low ball chaser i think are, is proving that so no need to a decision, I think, for next season for low ball ball chases. This is as good as it gets. Next time, get into the uh, into the champion brackets and hit it through there into the finals. Maybe, maybe even surprise your A team, like Love Bro Alliance. Maybe it's time for you to step down and <laughs> and, up and confirm that low ball ball chasers are indeed the A team and not the B team. That moment, that is it for us remember this weekend the alt gaming lounge in nottingham is the home for the nsc grand final for the winter championship including this one for rocket league of course the a team as you mentioned are there facing off against lancaster tylactos lancaster uh facing off against matt m's loughborough team that is a rematch from our league season two but loughborough they have a lot of work to do in terms of that match the last time they lost in what would have been a 4-0 sweep of course they 
back then. Uh, classic Murphy, uh, adding a goal advantage. <laughs> I, I'm just watching chat at the moment out of the, out of the corner of my eye, seeing the fun conversations in between people. <laughs> Meow asking a team who. It's a great, <laughs> great one, great one. Mish popping in saying that season two finals, Matt couldn't play, so. Ooh. Uh, that's something that Lancaster needs to watch out for. Matt M, of course, a top 500 player uh, in the world. So, a truly exceptional player stepping out on the pitch over the weekend. But I believe that is it from myself and Jar of Jam uh, here for the NSE. Uh, last stream from me over the split. But uh, this weekend... Watch out for the stream for that and some some casting for that uh, from the Alt Gaming Lounge in Nottingham. Get your tickets. They're available. Unless you're Matt M and the rest of Loughborough A or Lancaster, you've already got your tickets. Um, those tickets are called Playing in the Final. And, well, I believe that's it. Thank you very much for joining us in the last stream of the split. And we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>